Hi, my name is Will Everett and I'm a Philosophy and Theory of Knowledge or TOC teacher. In addition, I'm also the moderator for the IB Exchanges TOC pages. And the purpose of this presentation is to explore the relationship of Theory of Knowledge to Mathematics as part of the IB Diploma. In doing so, I hope to show why maths occupies such a critical place in the TOC course and also why a TOC approach can really help students develop their knowledge of mathematics. At the same time, I hope to give you a flavour of the type of activities that I use in my TOC lessons when exploring mathematics as an area of knowledge. To begin with, my take on mathematics as part of the TOC curriculum is very similar to that of Henri Poincaré. In short, mathematics is an activity and a way of understanding the world around us. Crucially, since mathematics is a convention or a human creation, it has the ability of being absolutely certain, since it is just about the relationship of ideas to other ideas. Yet at the same time, mathematics has an incredible ability to describe the world with such acute precision. Therefore, mathematics is also incredibly useful. Together, the characteristics of certainty, applicability and usefulness mean that mathematics is an enormously powerful way of thinking. Top, rather unsurprisingly, is about knowledge. What do we know and how do we know it? And knowledge is really about our relationship to the world around us. Indeed, I often stress to my students not to confuse knowledge with reality. Rather, it is what we think about reality. The course is divided into three major sections. The five areas of knowledge, of which mathematics is one. And then there are five optional themes. The students have to do two, as well as the obligatory theme, which is knowledge and the knower. With regard to the area of knowledge that is maths, and the question, what do we know? The first thing to ask of it is, what is mathematics really about? The obvious answer to this question is numbers. And one of the first things I ask my students to do is to tell me what exactly is a number. This generally draws a list of numbers. And then I might say, yeah, but where are these numbers? And then students tend to write a few numbers in their copy books or on the whiteboard. At this point, I'll then ask, yeah, but aren't these just lines or squiggles? And to make my point, I might draw five dots or five lines or the Roman numeral for five. Eventually, a student will generally pipe up and say, actually, numbers are in our heads. They are no more than ideas. The slide on the screen here includes some more questions and options to take the discussion in more mathematical directions. This takes me back to the point I was trying to make at the start of the presentation. Talk is not really about the world as such, but rather how we think about the world. Therefore, the talk of mathematics is about a particular set of frameworks and concepts we use to structure and organize the world we live in. For example, the number of students, chairs and desks in the classroom. And this is what the Pythagoreans understood. Geometry is another classic starting point to explore the nature of mathematics and triangles can be employed to make various points. One being that shapes, just like numbers, exist in their purest form in our minds. Another line of discussion might be that different conceptions of shape can all be true, offering a route to pluralism. In fact, I think fractals can also be employed to make this point. The other idea I try to lead the students towards through a discussion about shape is that mathematics is very much about definitions and logic. Beginning with the classic definition of a hexagon, there are various ways that this shape can be drawn. In class, one activity is to ask the students to reflect on all the possible variations that can be produced from one definition of a shape should they wish to increase the range of possibilities or reduce it, all they need to do is to adjust the initial definition of that shape. This then raises the question, if mathematics is no more than playing with ideas and definitions, what is the value of studying maths? And at least for all the schools that I've worked in, students study a lot of mathematics. 
One reason is that mathematics is an incredibly powerful way of thinking since it's able to describe and predict physical and human phenomena incredibly well. A key theme running through the top course is the knowledge framework that reflects the IB's pedagogy of developing a curriculum that triangulates between knowledge, content and concepts. The knowledge framework that I advocate has three aspects, the areas of knowledge, the methods of knowing and the 12 top concepts. I include the areas of knowledge here because an examination of one area offers us a lens through which we can assess the other areas of knowledge. Reflecting on the nature of logical certainty in mathematics helps us to explain the level and type of certainty available in the other areas of knowledge. For example, certainty is possible in the natural sciences, but this is of an inductive and contingent nature that certainty being psychological as a result of the quality of experimental data and theory or explanation that is used to explain that scientific knowledge claim. Drawing on the notion of the spiral and curriculum, the knowledge framework offers a vehicle to explore the themes that I return to often as I cover the units of the top course. These being the 12 top concepts, skepticism and how to respond to this challenge, absolutism versus relativism, perspectives and the different theories of knowledge, correspondence, coherent, pragmatic consensus, pluralist and redundancy. And arguably all of these theories of knowledge can be applied to mathematics. I also teach philosophy and not surprisingly there is a huge amount of crossover between philosophy and theory of knowledge. At the same time, I also think there is a strong relationship to mathematics and theory of knowledge. And in particular, I think TOC can offer teachers and students of mathematics a very interesting perspective. One way to explore this idea is through John Searle's Chinese Room Thought Experiment. To those outside the room, it seems that from the responses they receive, that whoever is inside understands the communication. A criticism facing many maths courses is the extent to which students understand at a deep level the mathematical thinking that they appear to evidence. My claim is that when talk is applied to mathematics, it has the potential to transcend the limits of each individual subject so that students are then better equipped to deal with complexity and nuance. A widely held belief about mathematics is that it is encouraging the students to think rigorously and to think in a logical manner. This is an objective shared by the Theory of Knowledge course. One way TOC can contribute to mathematics study is when exploring the language of maths, its concepts and syntax. For example, this approach can be applied to algebra. The rationale here that a conceptual and cross-curricular approach drawing from various types of thinking such as from the arts and the imagination can encourage students to be more flexible and dynamic in how they approach particular knowledge problems. In these two slides the learning focus is perspectives and that of definitions and proofs when applied again to triangles. The objective of the task is to encourage students to reflect on the importance of definitions in mathematics and the extent to which these are based on shared assumptions, but also determined by certain parameters. For example, if working in two or three dimensions. In this case, what TOC offers math students is the opportunity to appreciate in a broad sense both within and beyond the limits of the math curriculum, the way in which mathematics and mathematical thinking is both analytic and creative. In other words, mathematics can be thought of as an activity to think laterally about things such as triangles, hexagons and algebra, and that the only requirement is to adhere to agreed rules and conventions. At the same time, it's important to remember there are very good reasons for these rules and conventions. Therefore, an exploration of these only serves to develop and deepen students' knowledge of the subject. Thus, TOC offers mathematics a powerful lens through which to explore 
potentially what maths really is about. And by developing an understanding of the logic and language of maths, students can move towards knowledge that is more conceptual and academic. In an effort to draw together these ideas, I'll return again to the 12 top concepts and conclude that mathematics offers an objective perspective and perhaps even a route to certain truth. Such a view has a rich heritage and although we may fall short of Descartes' conclusion that mathematics provides that certain foundation for all knowledge, we can be confident in the idea that mathematics is coherent with so many knowledge claims derived from other disciplines. The central place TOC has in the IB curriculum both supports and is supported by the cognitive links it shares with mathematics. Both subjects develop students' ability to reason, encompassing thought processes we do every day. These aptitudes are essential for critical thinking and problem solving. In this regard, maybe Descartes' influence is still being felt. Reason remains the foundation of knowledge, and this, together with a flexible knowledge framework, is the hallmark of what it is to be human.